Asigue Asige is single. And even the verified page that belongs to Senator Asige, can you protect me from Senator Karen Nyamu? <laughs> I didn't see him in Dumberi when many songs were being sung. Yes. Mr. Speaker, what I can say, it was on a lighter note. But if he, I think Senator, agree, Senator Crystal. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, well. thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. So I want to thank her and wish her well and encourage people like Senator Kajuang to pursue their thinking the way they have been saying. Mr. Speaker, but secondly, as I, as I support the county government bill, I want also over the weekend uh, I saw Senator Ledamo Lekina uh, said in that uh, there is an intention to connect most of your North Frontier counties, and it is a privilege you are sitting as a speaker today, the counties of uh, various like Mandera, Wajia, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, Marsabi to be connected to National Grid to Kenya Power and Lighting. And I think that's a significant, and I want to thank Senator Ledama Olekina, who is our minority whip. And we support because we want access to power uh, to be easier. The only part I don't support with him is when he becomes specific on the person who should do it. But I hope those are issues that can be resolved. Mr. Speaker, the county government amendment uh, is a very direct, as my colleagues have said, under Article 54. In fact, it's sub Article 2, the state shall ensure the progressive implementation of the principle of people living with disability that at least 5% of the members of the public in elective and appointive bodies are persons with disabilities. So it is provided, Mr. Speaker, it is an affirmative direction that both elective and appointive, and I want to encourage Senator Crystal Asiga next time, should also give us a status implementation report of the appointive of 5% within governments the national government and the county governments, Mr. Speaker, so that we don't only talk about elective. The constitution is very subjective, that it is not only elective, Mr. Speaker, or appointive. So we want to know whether even appointed positions meet the criteria of people living with disabilities, Mr. Speaker. And I think that is Article 50, 50, 54. Mr. Speaker, on Article 177 in terms of county assembly membership, I think this is a very straight, more straightforward matter that at least 5%. It is disappointing that more than 20 counties are not meeting the threshold of PWDs and the young people, Mr. Speaker. The biggest challenge we have as a country, as we talk today, is the ballooning youth across the country. We need to hear their voices in county assemblies. We are lucky some of us were elected, we were still very youthful, even in this house, which was before referred to Nyumba Yawazem as a speaker. But we are lucky to be sitting in this house to give voice to many of young people's uh, uh, agenda. Even in the county assemblies, we want to see more young people running for elective, but also be given a chance through the uh, appointee. I'm happy the Secretary General of ODM is in the house. We have the Deputy Party Leader. We have the Party Leader of UDM, Senator Roba. We have uh, many people who run political parties in this house. That as they, and also live members of ODM, like Senator Beatrice Ogola. Mr. Speaker, we must come together, and uh, I wish Senate uh, Secretary General of ODM was listening, because this is what I'm saying is very critical. That even as political parties through the Speaker, that you need to consider BWDs even when running during nominations. They should be given priority, Mr. Speaker, because of the unique nature that BWDs undergone, unlike the able-bodied people, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes. Senator Charalge, would I you think like for to the be informed? first time in the life of this house, I can allow today Senator Sifuna <laughs> to inform me. Senator Sifuna. Honorable Speaker, I wanted to inform uh, Senator Charalge that, in fact, the mover of this bill is nominated by the Orange Democratic Movement, Honorable Speaker, uh, to represent the persons with disabilities. And we as a party continue to be very proud of her. So I think, uh, Honorable Speaker, Senator Cherargay, when he's addressing some of his issues, concerns about inclusion of persons with disabilities, maybe he should look behind his back and uh, not this side, because on this side, we are okay, Honorable Speaker. I thank you. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the SG uh, Nairobi City Senator for that powerful... And I want to commend the ODM also for nominating uh, Senator Crystal Asige. I have taken judicial notice. I'm happy also on our side, Senator Mbukful. Comments has been very important going into the... And by the way, Senator Crystal Asige, Senator Crystal Asige, she's an, uh, also a very accomplished musician.
And I was lucky with Senator Karen alongside. We did attend our launch, and it was very wonderful and beautiful. So the people living with disability can make a mark, Mr. Speaker. The third point I want to make is on the 5%. I think the young people, where are 20 counties, they must be called out. I want to challenge the IBC. I know IBC is not fully constituted as at now. But we need to call out the IBC. By the time they approve these nominations, without compliance of the Constitution, it is illegal, Mr. Speaker. When you see over 20 counties that PWDs are, th are not there, the young people, Mr. Speaker. Even I saw in Yamira they were also impeaching a, a youthful speaker, Mr. Speaker, the other day. We need to encourage young people to even to be the speakers of county assembly. But unfortunately, most of the governors, most of the senators and even uh, speakers I have not seen PWDs being elected. We need to change our value system as a country that people living with disability, the marginalized, the minority, can lead this nation, Mr. Speaker. I remember when former President Daniel Troiti Charamoy, when he was in being appointed as the vice president, he came from a minority uh, community, but he went out to lead this nation for 24 years, Mr. Speaker. You have seen many people, even uh, Professor Kiture Kindiki comes from a minority community. That is a challenge that as a, as a nation we must look beyond. I know, Mr. Speaker, where you come from, there is still a challenge about clannies, Mr. Speaker, where people look leadership in terms of numbers as opposed to competence. So as a country, we must look beyond the, the different able people that they can be leaders also. They can be governors. They can be ministers. They can, I remember there was a PS, Mr. Speaker, who, was, who delivered in the last uh, parliament, uh, Mugobe or the PS, the, the, with the state uh, diminutive stature, who was the PS, I think, in charge of education. She used to come from Western Mr. Even the late Professor Godia. Mr. Speaker, we must agree. And I'm happy in 2020, the Ministry of Health has defined on what disability means. And I want to ask Senator Crystal Asige to keep uh, the fire burning uh, and ensure that these interests are represented, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, uh, this one uh, on the youth, I think young people also have a chance. You saw the explosion of Gen Z protests the other day, Mr. Speaker. This is because they feel unrepresented. Most of the young people feel that they are not represented. But, Mr. Speaker, I want to challenge them also to learn for these positions. You cannot be saying we are not represented when you have not tried. Some of us, when we came here, we were very, very young, but we, we dared to try. So I want to challenge, Mr. Speaker, that young people, whatever they are, it is not enough to just say we are not represented. Can you go out and register and become voters and run for those positions? All these political parties are willing to incorporate young people to learn for these elective positions, including people living with disabilities, minorities and marginalized, Mr. Speaker. So I want to challenge the young people. Apart from making their voices being heard outside there, they have a chance to be elected. You need to convince to sell your manifesto, Mr. Speaker. Even I want to say, in conclusion, the resolution we just made the other day, it is because of that motion that we did contribute today, Mr. Speaker, that most of the young people, as we took today, they went into Gen Z protests, Mr. Speaker. It's because they, they felt that they were representations. But I was sad that uh, there is allegations of still abductions. There is still allegations of extrajudicial killings. And most of the victims are young people. Some of them, Mr. Speaker, I heard uh, Senator Kajuang say, dear, you can be born uh, as able person. In the last session, Mr. Speaker, if you remember, and we served with your father, uh, the distinguished uh, Senator Haji Senior, I was temporarily disabled. So the issue of disability, Mr. Speaker, I was only disabled in terms of my limbs, not any other thing was disabled, Mr. Speaker. But uh, there was a challenge, I realized, Mr. Speaker, that you can be disabled. It is not, uh, the, you, you have had even accidents happen, Mr. Speaker. Anything can happen, Mr. Speaker. If Senator Crystal Asike will tell you the, her story, everybody has a Kenyan encounter. So even what we are seeing, people who are maimed because of GNC protests, there is abductions, there are allegations of abductions. There is people being followed. I saw it the other day that there is a young man who is not able to afford to pay for, for surgery, Mr. Speaker. I saw it today in the news. Mr. Speaker, and even I'm disappointed that the allegations that Safaricom is sharing tranquilization coordinates for, 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 for the police and DCI to arrest Kenya, Mr. Speaker, that is infringing right of privacy. And I want to agree with you, Mr. Speaker, that the, the, the Committee of National Security should invite the Inspector General of Police. Why would you share the location and even the SMS and the, where the coordinates of the person of a Kenyan is? That is infringing right to privacy. And to do that, Mr. Speaker, you must get a court order. So the, if what I saw in Nation newspaper today 
is very unfortunate. Even data protection, I have been a victim for the last one week. My phone has been called, I have received insults, I have received praises. As we talk today, my, my phone, Mr. Speaker, has over 12,000 messages, SMSs. I have close to 20,000 WhatsApp, Mr. Speaker. I have received so many phone calls, and there is a data privacy breach that no one is addressing, Mr. Speaker. And they are salamiering me. By the way, I want to report to the House on all those, even the email of Senate is approaching half a million email that reacted to my bill, Mr. Speaker. And Kenyans are 60 40. As at now, 60% of Kenyans are supporting my bill, 40% are opposing. As the usual triangulations, Mr. Speaker, in terms of SMSs, in terms of WhatsApp, in terms of even Facebook update and social media, both in X account, Mr. Speaker. So I want to call, I want to agree with Senator Crystal that the issue of data privacy should be protected. Why would a police know that I slept in somewhere and come and arrest and abduct me, Mr. Speaker? The Inspector General of Police must be called, Mr. Speaker, uh, to order. And Safaricom also must be called to order. The fact that they are privileged of our data should not be allowed to abuse. Even Kenya Power and Lighting, Mr. Speaker, why are they sharing the data of where you live and the payments you have made in your houses? We must, and I want to challenge the national security. There is vice chairperson of national security here that should be, yes? Yeah, Senator Otsosi can inform me. Okay, Senator Otsosi. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to inform my neighbor and my good friend, Cherry Gay that uh, we are having challenges with the uh, exposure of private data because of the inefficiency of uh, the data pro office of the data protection commission which uh, uh, the ictd committee has brought a number of uh, statements here on that matter so i think for us to make progress on the issue of privacy of data we need to start dealing with this office called the Office of Data Protection Commission. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I say celebrate this tremendous work by Senator Crystal Lasige. Mr. Speaker, is to agree as members of ICT, we should take it as a priority, but also to encourage members, Mr. Speaker, the way we are giving accolades to Senator Crystal Lasige, we should also give accolades to Senator Cherargay. Mr. Speaker, I've seen my colleagues bashing me in funerals and birthday party and baby showers over my proposals in the house. I want to appeal for love also, Mr. Speaker. I'm also a human being, Mr. Speaker. So you should not be hard on me. Can you be just be whispering some of this Solomonic wisdom when need arises? Mr. Speaker, with those very many remarks, I beg to support this bill and see it to fruition. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Mugeni.